Today I'm playing with my oil pump, which is this. This is a 2013 model year 659 engine. And the oil pump's changed a little bit, and I realized this some time ago when I had to rebuild a 999 engine that had had a really nasty main bearing failure and had main bearing oil debris go all through it right up to the uh, to the crank and the heads, which is pretty extreme. And on these engines, the way this gear is attached is with a big C-clip. Let's see where that went. The big C-clip. And then gear pops off, it's symmetrical, doesn't matter which way it goes. And then there's a, a round ended key here that locates it. Another C clip underneath that. And that's off. And then you can get it apart. Now this is different to earlier gears. This is the aforementioned 999, and it's actually that bad that I can't get this out of the cover. It's obviously worn itself so much as a burr holding that steel shaft into the aluminium. I've never seen that before. But on this one, this is typical of the mounting system for the gear. And you can see there's a groove here, here, and here. So what you have is, <clears throat> I'll put the circlip on, I'll build it up. So the first circlip goes all the way down the bottom. Then another similar round-ended key goes in a little slot there. Then the gear goes on. Oops. Then the gear goes on. Make sure the key stays where it should. Yeah. If I can get it to go on. Ugh. This engine was a real struggle to get apart in most areas. Yeah. There we go. Gear on. So in the next little groove that is flush with the edge of the gear, there is this little snap ring, which can be quite annoying to get into place. Get some little snap ring pliers. Put that in there, open it up and drop it down to the bottom. Just make sure it's in the groove. Appears to be in the groove. Now on top of that went this thick spacer that has got a relief on the underside to go over the snap ring, like so. And then there was another circlip on top, like so. And I really don't know why they were so paranoid in the mounting system, but this is a 1996 600 monster pump, and it's got the same mounting system, just the way they did it. The other thing you'll notice between these two pumps is that this, being the 999 pump, 2003, has much coarser teeth on the drive than this 1996. And that was from 2001. All the 2001 model bikes have the oil pickup screen that has the separate cap, and then you use a 14 millimeter hex piece to undo the oil screen. That's 2001. All the 2001 model year bikes use this gear. And what they did for 2001 was just change that ratio, and the teeth on the crank gear changed a little bit, but nowhere near as much. And so these oil pumps spin a lot faster than these ones. And that was just to build the oil pressure. So a 2001 model bike, when they're cold, 
they'll see 100 psi oil pressure really easily. And it's just one of those things you need to be aware of. The older ones might get that high, but generally not. These ones do it with ease. The other difference, turn them over, is this pump has the oil pressure relief valve as part of the pump. And I'll pull this gear off again so we can get a closer look at it all. Yeah, gear off. <clears throat> so, so this here is the oil pressure relief valve. This side is the pressure side, and the pump spins, and the two roller gears build pressure. This side's the pressure side. So if the pressure gets to the point where it wants to push the blow off valve off, it simply pushes this valve in here back, which I can move a little bit, possibly slip and stab my finger, but you should be able to see that valve moving a little bit. So the oil simply flows from this side back to this side, which is the pickup side. Yeah, pickup side. This side, it picks it up out of the crankcases and it flows through the pump again. So just as it starts doing a loop. This pressure relief valve in cap style pump I don't know when it started. I'm going to say that possibly all the 916 and 996 SPS models, which started in 1997, they possibly all had it because they were the first ones to tend to get things like that. And possibly from 1998, all the small blocks, when they redesigned the small block for 98, they possibly did this because previous to this, the oil pressure relief valve was between the crankcases just sort of below where the gear shift mechanism bolts on in the left hand case. There was a big round brass plug there and behind that was a spring and the relief valve thing which is just a round thing with some holes in it. But this is oil pressure relief valve in pump and this is oil pressure relief valve in crankcase. It's fairly obvious. So <clears throat> that's the variations in pumps. And we go back to the 659 pump, which is this one. What I do when I'm rebuilding an engine is just pull the pump apart and see what it looks like. Again, back to this 999 engine, you can see there's lots of scratching in here. I think I had to actually belt the shaft through to get this cover off. And that was just a, an indication of how much debris had gone through this engine. Generally you don't see that. I did another ST4S with a main bearing failure about the same time and it also had some damage in the oil pump but not very much. I replaced the pump because it had some damage and you're there you might as well. Secondhand pumps are pretty easy to get but it wasn't a big thing but the oil pump sucks the oil out of the crankcase through the pump, pushes it out, and then it goes to the oil filter. So the only thing stopping steel getting into this is the pickup screen, which isn't that fine. So you can get steel into these, and this is like the first indication of if shit's gone bad and how bad. I'll pop the pump in the vise just to hold it. These late model ones also have a relief in the pump body that the older ones don't have. It's a relief in here. Whereas this one, which way does it go? It doesn't have that relief. And that's, I think, for clearance in maybe Diavel 1200 multi engines that have a bigger primary drive gear setup.
Now it should hopefully come apart nice and easy, which it does. And there you go. There's not really any way this gear usually goes. Sometimes this gear has a groove on one end, but as for up or down, there's really no way that I've ever seen of being any sort of distinction. You can see it's all pretty nice and smooth in here. There's no wear damage in there. It's particularly nice. So it's good oil pump. What I look for usually is the underside of the cap and just see if it's showing some wear marks, which it has shown a bit of wear there. So what I would usually do is just rub this down on a piece of flat tool steel with some emery paper on it, just to flatten it off. You can also, if you've got end float in your gears, you can rub this down back and forward, which I usually do just to make sure it's flat. I think I had one a little while ago that clearly wasn't flat. So it can't hurt to make it flat. But you need to make sure that if you rub this down, that when you put it together again, if this gear is then thicker than its recess, that gear will bind on the cover. So you might need to rub the gear down as well. And if you go too far, you'll end up, you know, with the cover hitting the end of this and it'll all be a mess. So don't get too carried away. This is my piece of tool steel. I actually made this at a fitting and turning course years ago. Just got a piece of flat and machine both sides or ground both sides flat. And I'll wrap it up in some 400 grit paper and use 400 or 600. It's up to you. I'd probably use 600, but I haven't got a nice piece, so I'll use 400. Bit of inox on top. If you do it fairly wet, you're not going to take a lot off. So all I'm going to see is this pattern on top, and you can see the pattern from where it was machined. It will take that off and hopefully take off that roughness there. It looks like it's pretty flat because we've taken off pretty much all of those swirly machining marks and now it's just a flat pattern with some scores around here. So that's really pretty good. I'm not going to get too carried away with this because that groove's not going to make too much difference. But it is fairly deep, so there's a fair bit of material removal needed to take that out, probably. Maybe I'll go a bit more. We are getting rid of it. Well, I might call that done. I don't want to take too much off it. Now we'll give the body a rub. Might give it a wash first. So that's just got the oil off it. So we'll give it a rub. Just need to remember, this is a fairly thin piece of tool steel, so just remember to wear your 
surface runs and where you need to have it rubbing. This bit can hang over the edge a little. Yep. I've got a big granite surface plate somewhere. I guess I could use that as well, but I've been doing it this way for so long that it's just how I do it. If you're concerned that it's not flat and you can see that it's not coming out, you can see there's still a swirl there and a big swirl there from the original machining marks. If you draw a texture across it, you'll see that where it's got a hollow or something, the texture will stay there. So it's got some marks there and there's a mark there. I did one recently where I sort of did the ends and you could see that it was almost a bit bananaed. It didn't have, I think at both ends they were sort of, it wasn't rubbing, but it was rubbing in the middle. So this gives you an idea of where it's contacting and where it's not. So a little bit of texture left in that groove. Everywhere else, the texture's gone, and that's really good. It means it's like mostly flat, except for that and that. I don't push too hard. I'd rather let the speed and the reps do the work. And it looks like that one's gone. There's still a hint of a swirl there, but it goes before it hits the edge. So that's probably pretty much okay, I think. Pretty much got rid of that. I'm happy with that. Okay, what we'll try and do now is put it together with the gears, put the screws back in, torque it up, and see if it turns. And just in case this is now too thin and doesn't feel like it, I think I can still feel a bit of an edge there. And sometimes these gears almost seem to have a bit of burrs on the edge, so I would give the gear a quick rub. to make sure that the ends of it are nice and flat. Which it mostly appears to be. Yep. Give it a quick brake clean, pop the top back on, see what it's like. To put it together again, I'll just spray a little bit of the HHS on the thread so the threads are lubricated. Then like the, the main bearing caps, make sure the surfaces are really clean. 
again a wipe with the brake clean so there's no oil on the surface the same thing here make sure there's no oil anywhere because there's still oil in the oil relief valve I generally don't pull them out I give them a good clean and blow out when we're done but back in. What I've found over the years is that when you go to tighten it up it's worth just turning the pump to make sure it spins freely. I've seen a couple over the years where you'll go to tighten the bolts up without sort of moving this cap around and you tighten the bolts up and it's tight and so you back the bolts off and then when you tighten it up again just spin it and it's just happy as Larry. I'm not sure why they do that but I guess there's a bit of movement in the holes so now it's gone tight. So. Yeah it's nice and loose. It might be because the pumps, the body's a little bit thin. Put back in the vise. So this way I'm not holding the body as well. And what I'll do is just spin it and just put a little bit of force on each bolt. Well, it's not going to go anywhere, and it's really nice. And torque them up 10 newton meters. Yep, so it's not the gears contacting the end, it's just the fact that it was misaligning a little bit. It's lovely. So now we can. Now it spins freely, there shouldn't be any end float in this, I can't really feel any, but there's no drag so it means the gears aren't hitting the cover. Now if you wanted to, you could rub the body down until it does start to drag, so that way you know exactly how much end float there is in your gears, i.e. none, that's up to you. I tend not to do that because I did it with one pump years ago and I got into a bit of a chasing my tail scenario where I'd rub the body down then the gears would be too tight so you'd just take a bit off the gear and then it would be too loose again and you can only, only really rub this gear. This gear, because of the shafts, you really can't accurately rub it. So you can't reduce the thickness of that gear. So you just need to be careful. If you want to pursue rubbing this body down, the thickness of this gear is your real defining point of where you can't go further then. But if we look on the side here, well, you can see there's a bit of a mark here. So that's the drive gear is actually hitting this cover, even though it didn't really feel like it. There's a little bit of a, a mark there. So I certainly don't want to go any thinner on this pump body by rubbing this surface anymore. So that looks good to me. What I'll do now is give it a final clean to make sure I'm happy because it's got found oil in there somewhere, I guess off that. So I'll clean it all up and then put it back together exactly the same way. I'll just pull the oil pressure relief valve out so you can all see what it looks like. Protect my nice rubbed surface.
probably Loctite it in to some extent. So that's the cap. Maybe no Loctite. Oh, I know there's definitely some green Loctite there. Spring. And the relief valve itself. There it goes. That's it there. So the spring sits on this side of it like so. And the valve just sits in the body like that. And when it gets pushed, it moves back and the oil flows into this hole and out these ports into this cavity, which is the low pressure side of the pump. So all our bits have had a clean. There's a bit of Loctite in here. Let's pick it out. Let's go and find out what the spec is for the, the torque on it. So they generally don't pull the oil off the oil pressure relief valves out. I don't see the need that you can clean them well enough after doing the rubbing. There's nowhere really for anything to hide. So once again, put some lube in the threads in the body. I hate having screws going into dry threads. And then clean it off again. Make sure there's none of the, the HHS or oil if you're using oil on the flat surface. You don't need oil anywhere because as soon as you put it together you can run some oil through it. And it'll be all nice and clean. Put a bit of HHS under the screw heads so they're lubed as well. Okay. And back into the vise. Just so again, I don't have to hold it while I try and tighten them up. So if all the screws are just that little bit free.
we go. Another 10 newton meters again. Spins beautifully and free. So, pressure relief valve, just drop it in. Spring, lost my jaw. Now I'll go and find the spec for the torque. So, the book says 25 Newton meters for this plug, it's 15 by 1 thread. And the Loctite spec is Loc 5, which is Loctite 128435 or something, which is a meaningless number that Loctite often have. Apparently it's equivalent to 648 retaining compound. So we'll drop some 648 on it. There wasn't a great deal on it. And my fingers clean. I'll wash with some brake clean. Five Newton meters. Wants to stay in there. So, oil pump assembled, pressure relief valve in, and you can see how freely it spins. Without any oil in there, there's just no drag. So we'll pop some oil in it. This is the in hole down here. So let's run some oil into it. You can sort of feel it. Even with that, which is a 1550 or something, you can feel it increase the drag. So with that, it should be getting a bit of oil around. Might run out the bottom at some point, but if we get it in there, it should get in there everywhere it needs to go. I'm sure once it gets pressure, it starts squeezing it into all its passages. And now all I need to do is put the gear back on. So C clip on the bottom. We'll see if the multi grips gives me less chance of having a C clip hurling across the workshop. Oh, hang on. I think we need to have the C clip like so because the key pokes into the circlip groove. There we go. More sense. Gear. Okay, gear. Keyway lined up. There we go. And again, the looks like the K 
key is in the circlip groove or C clip groove. So it goes on like so. That's in. That's oil pump cleaned, a little bit recode, and back together in one piece and spinning lovely and free. So now it goes in a plastic bag to keep it clean and I have to sort out if I'm going to put my cylinders on next or my clutch cover.